Hi everyone, if you like my channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Much of whisky making is luck, pure and simple. Two identical casks might mature in wildly different ways. You can imagine what a challenge this presents. But it's also when the game gets exciting. Evaporation takes from every cask of the Boveni. It's what we call the angel's share. In this game you must control what remains and let your losses set up a winning move. that you were involved in mm -hmm. right from the start. Yeah. No, no, you had a lot of industry knowledge. It was good. And then he relied on your expertise and knowledge of the estate. Yeah, we see the road coming up and the path continues up here, mm -hmm. joins this truck and goes over, over the hill. That's this, this is out onto the edge of Burnhead Wood here now and we're onto Heather Hill. And this is where we, we selected Heather from along here whole field of heather, but the heather's all kind of lovely browns and soft, yeah, soft yeah, greens, just a... mossy colour. It's pretty incredible to think that the water's run from these hills and affected the flavour of that whisky in yeah. the glass and also this heather dried in the kiln. It don't hurt anymore all the stills have run dry. Is that right? Yep. <laughs> and we've Dave, Dave to come down with his bogey load of hair there. And we throw it on the fire. Poof, gone. To get the benefit of like by something else. So that we'll dump in the hair there down. Yeah. And that'll stop it from flaring up. So we're upstairs in the malt loft now, where we have a few heaps of barley just waiting to be malted. So I would reckon there's 250 ton of barley there. So much tradition and heritage here, but a lot of experimentation as well. These trials were driven by you when you were distillery manager here. 
being able to take stuff off the estate from both the, the heather and the barley point of view and using the estate back in 2000 <laughs> at a point where we got away with murder. It was completely different to what we normally did. Yep. With the stories the last few years, it's been really inspirational for everyone at Balveni. The work that you, you did back then has really inspired new generation. It was outrageous that we got away with it, but we were delighted we did. Um, for me, it has huge potential to really say something about Balveni. No use in the night. I, I wanted, wanted to, to cry, the day they said it was true. I just can't get it out of my mind. I can't believe it, can, can you? <laughs> <laughs>
food and beverage, men's fedoras, uh, each named after black jockeys and trainers, so that when, and Woodford uh, has engraved bottles for brown foremen in helping to tell. Once the Buffalo Trace has aged and reached maturity, we go into the warehouses and we sample each of those barrels and we taste them and we still compare those samples to the very first batch we made in 1999. We want consistent flavor, we want that to be a nice, mature, well-rounded bourbon to give all the aspects we're after, the sweetness and the caramel flavors and vanilla. And once they reach the peak of maturity, and we think they taste just right, we'll put those barrels into a batch and we bottle them as Buffalo Trace. After they're fermented, then we'll pump the, that beer to the beer still. And we have a uh, seven foot diameter, uh, 30 foot tall still that we use for uh, distilling all the first distillation for Buffalo Trace. And then we will double distill into a pot. We'll put the, the first distillation into the pot and we'll do that again so all of our whiskey is double distilled. And then we'll send that to the uh, warehouse where we'll put that whiskey into the barrel. The barrels are a very important part of the process for Buffalo Trace bourbon. You have to use new charred oak. We specify that we want to age our wood at least six months before we char that wood, and we have the tightest specs in the business. One of the things that we do a little different than others is we pressure cook all of our corn. And when you're cooking rye and malted barley, you don't have to have that high temperature that you do on the corn. When you're cooking rye, we cook to 160 degrees. The malt is the same way, we go to about 155. And so you get complete conversion with the rye. And with the corn, it takes more temperature. And then when we add the pressure, it just allows us to cook a little bit faster and more complete. And we're cooking basically around the clock right now. Cool Farm, that's right on the west coast of the island. If you look from kind of the farm buildings and look southwest, you're looking to Ireland. If you look due west, you're looking to America. We are open to all the elements, basically. I could have sand at the top of one field, rock in the middle of it, and peat at the bottom of it. So it's it's a really it's a hard farm to farm, to be very honest with you, but. We just have to do what we can kind of things. <laughs> the actual growing season was pretty good, you know, we had a decent spring. The summer was, wasn't too bad, we had a reasonably good mix of moisture and sunshine. Normally, test the moisture and it's near 20% will go, but this year it was, ah, we'll leave it another hour and we'll, we'll get it when we get it. A lot of folks have us was ready kind of end of August. Ours was a wee bit later than ripening, which kind of benefited us this year. But then, beginning of September, the weather broke for about two or three weeks. And the 15th, 16th, or thereabouts of September, it cleared up. The wind swung round to the east, and we just had unreal. It'd be the best harvest weather we've had since Drone for the Gladi. 
when the weather's good, combines moving, and it just it's uh, it's probably the be one of my picks of the year kind of thing for the jobs that gets done. We have six silos where we can store about 6,000 bushels at a time. Once we put everything into the silos, then we will pull those out. We grind everything through a hammer mill, uh, through a 10 64th of an inch screen, and that's all designed to give us the right grind and the right uh, size for our cookers. And we, once we grind that all out, we put it in meal bins. On the meal floor, we'll use a traveling scale hopper, and that traveling scale hopper allows us to move from one meal bin to the other, and then we'll pull out the rye and the malted barley in separate hoppers, and we cook those separately in smaller tubs. I'm Harlan Wheatley, Master Distiller here at Buffalo Trace Distillery, and we've been distilling here for over 200 years. We started back in 1773 with a settlement known as the Leestown Settlement, and the first thing they did was put up a distillery, and we've been expanding ever since. The reason we call it Buffalo Trace is because Buffalo crossed the Kentucky River here at the site in the original settlement, and the pioneers followed behind. So we call it Buffalo Trace in honor of that original heritage. The ingredients are a very important part of the process. It's one of the ways that we are able to, to change the flavor of the base bourbon whiskey. And with bourbon whiskey, there's some rules in place that we have to follow and one of them is you have to have at least 51 percent corn and the rest has to be a grain. So we use a yellow dent number one grade uh, corn for our buffalo trace. We put a healthy amount in the buffalo trace recipe in order to deliver some sweetness to the uh, base bourbon whiskey and then we add a small amount of rye and what that does, it adds spice and, and fruitiness from the rye grain, just like rye bread. And then we add the malted barley, which is used for, primarily for the enzyme, but uh, it does contribute somewhat to the flavor. As Buffalo Trace ages in the barrel, it's picking up color every year. So it evaporates about 3%, but it also picks up color from the wood. It's all those wood sugars and caramels and tannins that you pick up from the wood. So it's important when you're picking locations in the warehouse to consider uh, temperature and climate. So we, we tend to pick middle floors or, or sweet spots for Buffalo Trace based on climate. And then the colder weather extracts that whiskey out of the wood. So you're getting throughout the, you know, even days, you're gonna get a variation in, uh, of the breathing of the barrel of the whiskey going in and out of the wood. And that's a good thing because it's extracting those good flavors from the wood. Once we complete the cooks, and you put those under pressure, cool them down with a vacuum system, and then we'll pump those cooks, each one, into a fermenter. It takes us about four and a half hours to fill a fermenter, and we have 12 large fermenters, or 92,000 gallons, and we're putting in about 87, 88,000 gallons in each fermenter. And we do that, and we let them sit for about three to five days. Before we add all the grains, we add yeast, which is a key ingredient for our uh, process. And once we put the yeast in, then the yeast starts consuming the sugars that were converted during cooking. As we add those cooks, the yeast becomes more hungry as you add, you know, when you hydrate it. And when you add those cooks, the yeast starts consuming the sugar. The byproduct of that, of that action is the alcohol. 